Hello, and welcome back to the Summoner's Guide to Final Fantasy XIV. This time, we are taking on the level 59 story dungeon that sinks to level 60. This is the Great Google Library, one of my favorite dungeons in all of Final Fantasy XIV. I'm so looking forward to playing this, and I am so much looking forward to showing you the wonderful level 60 summoner ability that is the capstone of the Heavensward summoner abilities. Alright, there's an item level sink on this, for the sake of people who are actually running this at 59. Also, for the record, I love the music in this dungeon. Alright, so... I told you I was going to tell, talk to you about the level 60 ability. Really, it's best that I just show you. But I think I'm going to wait for the next group of enemies, because I, uh, I get impatient. So the level 60 ability is the cap of the, or at least for now, of the, uh, yeah, of the Dreadworm Trance. So I'm going to go into Dreadworm Trance, and I'm going to start just like I had been doing before. I'm going to use some Tri Bind to weaken the enemies, and I'm going to keep an eye on my gauge. If my gauge gets down to a couple seconds, I'm going to trigger this. That is Death Flare. A very powerful AoE attack that you can that you use to terminate your Dreadworm Trance and hit everything in an AoE around your target. Now it does have damage fall off, so the potency does go down the more targets it hits. But it is still one of the most powerful moves in the summoner's arsenal, and properly timing your use of Death Flare is really the key to properly using summoner abilities at level 60. So it's really going to be all about getting through your ether flow stacks and deciding, okay, do I, the enemies have enough health left that I'm going to go into my Dreadworm Trance rotation? No. So I'm going to just wait for my ether flow to charge up and start with my Death Flare rotation on the next pull. So properly timing your abilities becomes really important, especially in the dungeon setting. Oh, we're making the bigger pull. That's fine. Because when you have all of the abilities of Dreadworm Trance and Death Flare at your disposal, you want to make big pulls. targeting an enemy. Alright, coming up on timeouts on the Death Flare. I'll bait everything there, and I'll even paint the flare. Heck, I'm even going to throw in a fester. That gets me right up to Dreadworm Trance, just in time for the first boss. The Demon Tome. I'm sure you remember the Demon Wall from Amdavor Keep. Well, the Demon Tome is a very similar boss fight. Let's zoom out a little bit here. Alright, I'm going to drop all that on him. Oh! Yeah, yuck. Alright. Slow doesn't help my cause any. Just like in... Ah! Here we 
go. Nearly didn't get that off. Yeah, the slow effect wasn't good. Just like in the, uh, the original Demon Wall. Oh, and then there's that. So yeah, the mechanics are very much like the original Demon Wall in that you want to stay out of that purple goop and any other AoEs he throws at you. When he casts Disclosure, you need to get around to the other side of the book. And when he casts that ability, he's going to freeze the entire arena, making you slide around a little bit more. side of the book. Just remember whenever he uses O. Yeah, remember whenever he uses Disclosure that you need to get behind him. And, uh, Looks like our party's having a little bit of trouble not dying. Okay, come on, seriously? to this particular dungeon. Uh... Okay, well, that was an interesting uh, run of that dungeon. You can see, if you ignore the mechanics in that fight, it's gonna wreck you. as a summoner, it can be good to try to keep the other party members alive. Now well, let's see how the rest of the dungeon goes. ads are what you really have to worry about in this particular room. They're going to stay there, so it really would behoove the tank to get everything up near the page 64 ad. And it's going to fire some rather nasty line AOEs, so be on the lookout for that. Let's refresh our... Uh-oh. The thing I forgot to do is resummon. Uh... 
Alright, I've been targeted by page 64, so it's gonna fire that death ray at me. See, Death Flare is a really wonderful way for clearing out groups. These guys are taking a lot of damage from my Death Flare combo. Alright, there's another page 64. So I'm going to use that as kind of the basis of my combo here. Alright, these guys are almost down, so I'm going to avoid the uh, Dreadwork Trance combo at this point. Now, if you are so inclined, there's a lot of books you can read that have a lot of lore in this dungeon. Uh, most parties are not going to give me the time to do that, though, so... Run with a group that you know is going to let you do that, or a group... or, or get to a high enough level and try running it solo, uh, that will be a challenge in and of itself. Oh, I need to do this. Okay, he's dead. I'm just gonna kill that early so I can get my ether flow back for the inevitable... Oh. He apparently didn't get pulled with everything else. Okay, well, let's worry about whittling him down. Final Fantasy V fans will remember Biblos, the demon of the book. He has some interesting mechanics to worry about, so... Start out with standard boss fighting tactics. That little line AoE there is gonna hit whoever it targets. It can probably be... I, it's probably better to run that toward the center keep Biblos in place. Alright, eventually he'll jump onto the book and go in vulnerable. Some more book ads will appear. That can be tanked down, or DPS down, I should say. I'm gonna save my Death Lair combo. Alright, once one of the ads goes down, you get this tether with kind of this little blue flame. Run the tether into Biblos, and he'll become vulnerable again. At this point, you can resume your combo. And I waited a couple of moments, even though the death flare, or even though the uh, tri disaster refreshes when I use uh, Breadworm Trance. It'll at least allow that I have another shot at it later, and I didn't use death flare! Ah! That was a big mistake on my part. I didn't fully execute my combo. And that's a lot of a lot of wasted damage output. So don't do that. Pay attention to the, to the time left on your clock so that you don't lose your best attack. Okay, just like last time, some books will appear. want to DPS him down. Run the tether into the boss. Alright, this time I'm going to do this right. I'm going to watch the timer, which is that little dragon-shaped indicator down by my Everflow gauge, and now I'm going to execute Death Flare. I still have my dots up, so I'm going to use Fester. I'm just 
just going to try to push the boss. And notice, I have my uh, Dreadworm Trance ready to go. If he hadn't been taken down, I could have run another combo on him. So really the nice thing about adding Dreadworm Trance and its 15 second duration is uh, it gives you 15 seconds of something to do while you're waiting for your next Ether Flow to charge. This will get even, uh, this will become an even bigger factor at level 70 when you gain the Summon Bahamut ability. But we'll get to that when we get to that. For now, we've got a large quantity of ads to take care of. And again, this Tribine is really going to do some damage while I'm in Dreadworm Trance. I'll get down to about three seconds and nuke everything with Death Flare. Oh, don't forget to use your Bane and your Path abilities. So again, at this point, you're going to have a lot of things to throw at groups. You're not quite down yet, so I'm going to throw in a Bane Flare. And I'm going to Bane him. And I'll use that. I'll use another Pain Flare on him. And now I'm ready for another uh, Trick Room Trance combo. So yes, Summoner becomes very fun to play when you hit 60. Because all the combo abilities that you can use... And the possibilities that are opened up by the Dreadworm Trance and Death Flare, which, man, I didn't come off my Death Flare. Well, if we get this pull made in the next seven seconds, I can do that. <coughs> and what do you know? There's Ether Flow. So I'll Bane, and I'll Pain Flare. Oh, and look! My Shadow Flare is ready, so I'll use that, and my... And my pet ability's there. I'll use that. Oh, and now I can uh, now I can pain flare again. Oh, and look what that means. I can actually now finish these guys off with a wonderful little uh, death flare. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. Yes, all of the uh, of the turmoil that you've had for 59 levels, feeling underpowered goes away when you have the full impact of all these combos. Now, of course, the limiting factor remains your Ether Flow ability, which right now I'm waiting on. Now I can bane everything, though, and bane flare. Oh, and look, there's my Shadow Flare again my pet ability, and I need to move. Yeah, I think I should finish everything off with my Threadworm combo. Alright, I'm going to watch this cutscene. It'll give me time for my ether flow to recharge. Ah yes, this guy's got some mechanics, and we're gonna see if this group remembers them. They didn't seem to remember the mechanics in uh, the first boss fight. So let's see how it works in this boss fight. This is a fight where it's very easy to wipe if you screw up mechanics. The ever-living Bibliotaph. Alright. Begin with standard tactics. I suggest positioning yourself between those circular uh, indentations, or the, those, the, basically those discs with three purple marks. Don't
can't stand on them for the duration of the fight. You kind of stand between them. Because when you get marked, it's going to drop a circle that's going to fire off a continuous AoE, and you really don't want them on these discs. All right, when he casts Void Call, these little circles will appear on each of the on each of those discs. First phase, you only need to have one player stand on each of them to seal them off. Second time, you're going to need two players on each. Third time, you're going to need three. So, this is why you don't want these marks to be on those circles. You want them to be away from the circles so that when you're trying to run to the various... Alright. Come with me. Yeah, because if, if that happens... All right, we're going to try to take care of the ad. Now, the ad would not have appeared had we managed to seal off all of the void circles. And so that's why you need to seal off all the void circles. Fortunately, my AoE damage with uh, Death Flare and whatnot can help take that guy down. But now we're going to come up to a phase where we're going to have to deal with three circles. So that means three players are going to have to stand on a circle in order to seal it off. And the ads that are going to spawn from these are powerful. Alright, so keep that mark away from the circles. Get in between them. They're right next to each other. Get in the circles. Get in the circles. Get in the circles. Get in the circles. We did it! Yes! All right. Now it's just time to finish this guy off with everything in our arsenal. I'm just going to keep running around and casting Ruin 3... Until I get to a couple seconds left, cast my Death Flare. We got this now. I was a little worried at the beginning of the fight, but we pulled through in the end. So yeah, in that fight, the biggest thing is to make sure that you have enough people standing on those circles to interrupt the Void Call. Other than that, just dodge, 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 and place those um, place those markers in between the two circles so that they don't interfere with your trying to jump onto the circles to dispel your uh, void call. Other than that, that's really all you need to know for that. And it's a fun dungeon. Enjoy it. And enjoy your level 60 summoner ability, Death Flare. It's so much fun to use. So, we're almost done with the Heavensward story. Only one more dungeon and one more trial to go. Then we get into post-story combat. Or, combat content. So, still a lot of level 60 content to go, but uh, next up is our first level 60 dungeon, the Etherochemical Research Facility. Until then, have a great day.